Hi there, my name is Scott Cressman, one of the product managers for the Umbrella product team. Today I'd like to show you some improvements we've recently made to the policy wizard in our Umbrella web dashboard for defining policies. The following are the policy wizard improvements that we'd like to show you today. The ability to filter identities for a quick selection within the policy wizard. Policy by specific Active Directory users and computers. We've improved the representation of Active Directory groups and made it more similar to what you're used to in Active Directory. And we've added the ability to do on-the-fly settings creation and editing. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll start by going to the Configuration tab here. First, though, I'd like to do a quick refresh on how policies work. As you probably know, umbrella policies are made up of three major components. Identities, policy settings, and block page settings. Identities are who a policy applies to. Different types of identities include networks, laptops, mobile devices, or Active Directory users, computers, or groups. Policy settings are what settings are enforced and include category and security settings and also domain block and allow lists. The block page settings are how to configure the resulting experience should a request be blocked. So these three sections are where you can configure each of the identities policy settings, and block page settings. And they correspond to the main three steps in the policy wizard, which you can see here. Identities, policy settings, and block page settings. With identities, however, the exception is Active Directory users, computers, and groups, which are automatically imported once a virtual appliance is set up via the Active Directory configuration page here, and linked to your Active Directory servers via our AD connector software. So, Moving back to the policy wizard, here is where we've made a few improvements that we thought would be worth sharing with you. The first improvements of note are located in the identity picker, which is the first page of the policy wizard. The first improvement is that you can now choose Active Directory users and computers individually, instead of having to create groups for single or small amounts of AD users or computers. So you can see by clicking in Active Directory computers, I have a list of AD computers that I can choose to apply a policy to. The second improvement is that when you click on a specific identity type, you can now filter that list when you are looking for something specific. In this example, I know I want to choose my laptop. So I'll click on roaming computers and I will type in Scott to see my roaming computer come up. So I can select it easily and now I don't have to page through numerous roaming computers to find the identity that I want. These filters work for each of the identity types and should make your life a lot easier if you have a lot of devices or a large Active Directory environment of many users, computers, or groups. So you can see here I can do another search for Scott and up I come. Next improvement is a change to how we display Active Directory groups. Previously we attempted to display the fully nested directory structure, but this was difficult to use and was dissimilar to how you're used to managing groups in Active Directory. So we made a change that within the AD groups container, you now see all of your Active Directory groups as a flat list, and you can select them from there. We've retained the ability to descend into nested groups, but only for the purpose of allowing you to verify the members of the group you're choosing, that they include the elements you expect them to, or to ensure changes you've made to your Active Directory have propagated into the umbrella system. Note that if you want to make exceptions for large groups or entire identity types, we encourage you to do so by creating a new policy rule for those identities that you want to exclude, rather than attempting to choose an entire higher level group and then go in and choose exceptions separately. The best practice is really to define policies bottom to top, as you can see here, the default policy all the way up to this policy, and do it from least specific on the bottom to most specific on top. It's important to note that these stacked policies are prioritized according to which ones will trigger, but only one policy will execute once an identity match occurs. So if you put the same identity in two different policies, only the first will fire, not both. The next improvement can be seen in the next two steps of the policy wizard, and we call this on-the-fly settings creation and editing. It allows you to add or modify policy and or block page settings without exiting the policy wizard. So if you're creating a new policy like I am now, with, for example, category settings that are different than any you've used before, you can simply create a new category setting by clicking Add New Setting and then choosing the types of categories that I want to block. Now note that I've got to give this a name, Scott's New Category Settings, 
and it can now be reused within other policies if I choose to. But as I click Add, I come right back into the place I was in the policy wizard and I don't lose a step and it auto populates with the category settings that I've created. The same goes for actually editing settings. So in this case, I'm going to choose security settings. I'm going to choose one of these guys here, and then I'm just going to click on this little icon here, and you can see it'll actually open it up as if I'm editing it. I can change it and save it, and then it comes right back to the policy wizard. Now, keep in mind, making that change will affect any other policies that are referenced in this particular security setting. So make sure your changes will not have unintended consequences. And that's it. We've made these changes based on feedback from customers in an effort to make it even more easy and quick to define and modify policies. We hope you like what you see and would love your feedback. Thanks for your time. This is Scott Cressman signing off.